So to any Harry Potter fans that may have clicked on this review or maybe you watched this movie because you were wondering if this has anything to do with the Mandrix from Harry Potter, kinda? What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about a movie that I got to check out a little bit earlier coming out this week on November 10th on the horror streaming service Shudder and that is called Mandrake. This film was directed by Lynn Davison. This is her directorial debut and was written by Matt Harvey and stars people like Deidre Mullins, Paul Kennedy, Durbel Crotty, and tells the story of a weird witch lady that is taking kids and people and sacrificing them. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're new here to the channel, I wanna welcome you to hit that like button and that subscribe button as I talk about all things movies, TV, and all kinds of other fun stuff here on the channel. And if you're a fan of horror specifically, I do usually do at least one early movie review a week for the horror streaming service Shudder. That's all about horror. And today we're talking about Mandrake, a movie that comes out on November 10th that I got to check out a little bit early. Like I mentioned, this is the directorial debut of Lynn Davison. And it's always interesting to see the first film that a director directs. You know, this person has directed short films and some episodes of television, but this is the first time they're directing a feature and it's coming to Shudder as a Shudder original. So again, a big thanks to those over at Shudder for sending me over an early screener to check out their movie. So what did I think about it? Honestly, I wasn't a fan. I, I thought that there was things about this movie that did work, and we're gonna get into that first, uh, but ultimately, I just didn't really find this to be a film that I'll ever see myself revisiting, nor is it a film of 2022, especially in the horror genre, that I'm necessarily clamoring to recommend to anybody. I think if you have the horror streaming service Shudder, then maybe if you throw it on, you'll enjoy watching it to some degree, but honestly, this wasn't a movie that really worked for me on a narrative level or on a character level, which ultimately I think is the the thing that's the most important when you're watching a movie. Now let's talk about what really worked about this movie. I really enjoyed the setting. This takes place in Ireland and so I think that they use a lot of really great locations and settings to really amplify the story here and give it a nice creepy feel and vibe. There's a lot of nice landscape shots in this movie that really do hone in on the overall area giving you a good idea of where this film takes place. So since most of the film does take place in practical locations and settings, the overall aesthetic of the film tends to be a lot better. Better. There's also a really great use of practical effects, which I thought was definitely one of the other highlights of the film, and I did think that the performances throughout were pretty good. Some of the performances are just decent in my opinion, but for the most part I did find the performances were pretty solid while watching this. So where does this movie really lack? where it really comes down to its story. We hone in on a woman who deals with people who have just come out of uh, prison and are now on probation. She's the kind of person who will go to somebody's home and put the you know house arrest um, thing around their ankle and things like that. And then her ex-husband, who she had a child with, uh, is a police officer himself. And they kind of build a bit of a weird, estranged relationship between her and her son, who now lives with her ex-husband and uh, his now stepmother, who's pregnant with another child. And uh, they kind of build this weird family family dynamic. Our main character isn't really the greatest mother. There's a big undertone and message about motherhood here that ultimately I don't think necessarily stuck the landing in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what we're going for here. This mother who is not really raising her son. She's not really connected to her son. And uh, the son actually loves the stepmother a lot more and compares his mother to his stepmother frequently because she's the one that he's always with and she's the one that's far more motherly. And so there is this thing that weighs on our main character throughout the course of the film where she's wondering you know can her true mother really have somebody else raise her child i won't get too deep into the spoilers but that's the base premise here is that we're honing in on this woman who's got this bit of a weird estranged family kind of situation going on she does deal with criminals who have served their time and her husband is a police officer in the mix of all this the woman that our main character is going to put the house arrest ankle bracelet on um, this woman is known by Bloody Mary. That is the nickname, nickname she has because of the fact that she actually killed her ex-husband with an axe. And so this woman is believed to be a little bit strange in the community. And people do believe that she is some sort of witch or that she's into some sort of mess.
messed up things. And over the course of the film, we do learn that this woman is actually kidnapping people and sacrificing them to some deity. I won't get too much further into really what's going on here in this movie or how things play out, but that's what we got going on here. We got some sort of weird tree deity kind of thing going on here and you got this woman who is a past murderer who's in the mix of all this and then you have this you know ex-couple that's you know involved in law enforcement to some degree and honestly i, I kind of struggle with the premise because it didn't really have a solid plot for me to be able to just say hey here's the premise here's the clear-cut story of what this film's about i kind of had to break it down into various pieces of what we have going on in this film to kind of explain what it's about because i didn't really find that this film had a strong plot in my opinion i found it to be rather aimless for a lot of time on screen i never found myself in caring about the characters or anything really going on story-wise when characters did die or things went bad for certain characters i never really felt a sense of stakes nor did i ever really feel entangled in the story and the characters i never felt for any of the characters and by the time the runtime ended my fiance and i who watched this movie with me uh, we looked at each other and just said yeah no not very good that's pretty much how i felt about this movie throughout the entirety of the runtime i didn't think it was the worst movie I've seen this year, but by no means was it a film that I can recommend to you guys. And by no means do I think it's a film that's really worth sitting around for the hour and a half, to be completely honest. I would say the best part about this film really is the locations used and the practical effects, which is awesome. But unfortunately, in today's world, is very common to pull off. You know, we have really great cameras. Most films are filmed with really great cameras, so more often than not, you're going to have really good camera quality. So it really comes down to if there's masterful cinematography going on with that. And I didn't really find that this film had anything special when it came to the cinematography. Beyond that, in terms of locations and settings, if you can choose a really cool location and setting, it will really amplify your film. But I don't really feel like it makes the film. And then when it comes to the practical effects, sometimes that can make or break certain films, especially if you go back to older horror from like the 70s or 80s. But this one, for me, outside of having decent practical effects and practical costumes, just ultimately didn't really have a story or narrative or character development that had me attached to anything going on. I'd rather watch a film that has horrible effects but has a good story and a good character development than watch a movie that has pretty good effects but really doesn't have anything for you to really latch onto emotionally. Or I'd even prefer a film that has good practical effects but is just good dumb fun entertainment but isn't really great on a story level or character level but just knows what it is and it's just a it's so bad it's good or it's so cheesy you just kind of have to enjoy it for what it is kind of movie unfortunately mandrake doesn't really fall into any of those categories that add any entertainment for me i found myself bored throughout my eyelids were getting heavy throughout the course of the film there really wasn't much for me to really grab on when it came to this film and i don't think i'll ever see this movie ever ever again so big thanks to you guys for watching that's gonna be my thoughts on this movie mandrake yeah not worth it in my opinion but if you did see it and that's what brought you to this review please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought and if you were a fan of this movie definitely want to hear what worked for you about this movie i'm always open to to hearing the various subjective approaches to watching a film and the different takeaways that people do have. Mandrake may have not worked for me, but it may have worked for you. So definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. So hit that like button, comment your thoughts, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.